Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today's one's going to be how to get the new exotic trace rifle, the Agar Scepter, in Destiny 2 Season of the Lost. So it is currently the 14th of September and the weekly reset just went through and Bungie dropped the new exotic quest, the Hollow Coronation, which you can pick up via your Wayfinder's Compass in the Helm and start the 12 step long process of actually obtaining this new trace rifle and I'm going to be going over all of that in this video. But before you go ahead and follow along with this guide, you need to make sure that you go ahead and complete your Tracing the Stars quest steps from the previous weeks. If you have been keeping up with this season and you have already completed them, then you're good to go and you can follow along with this guide as soon as you are watching it. If you have not completed that, then I recommend going out and checking my guides on this channel and they show you exactly where those atlas cues are for those missions. So that way you can bang those out quickly and then get back to this video to follow along with the rest of this quest line. So once you have completed all your tracing the stars quest steps and you're ready to follow along with this guide, you want to head over to the helm and interact with your wayfinder's compass. You'll get a little bit of dialogue from Mara Sov to start it off with and then immediately after that you'll be able to pick up your A Hollow Coordination exotic quest step down here below. So once you go ahead and grab the exotic quest from the Wayfinder's Compass, what you want to do is head up the stairs behind you and then go across the catwalk and through the portal because you then need to talk to Mara Sov. So once you go ahead and talk to her, she'll give you a little bit of dialogue which you can go ahead and pause right here and read if you'd like. But then after she gives you this dialogue, she'll give you the second quest step which is to then go over to the Dreaming City and collect the next five Atlas Cues. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and skip this next part, but if you'd like to know where all these Atlas Cues are, you can go ahead and follow along with the on-screen right now.
Once you have collected all five Atlas cues on the Dreaming City, you'll then be given the third quest step, which will want you to activate the Atlas terminal. You can do this via the director on your map and by selecting a hollow coordination while you're hovering over the helm. Once you load in, you'll want to jump through the portal immediately and then insert your Atlas cues into the Atlas device here. And then you'll be able to hear the dialogue, which I'll let run out between Marasov and the crow. Much loved by the flock. Convinced a great many to fly with the twins when they left the hollow. He knelt before Riga and presented the crown of feathers their mother had crafted for her and waited for her to respond in kind. She rose as queen, but did not gift Agar the scepter. His scepter. Despite everything, she still said he wasn't ready. It was a test of his will, right? His devotion. One he would not fail, for he was patient, so patient. Together the twins led the flock away from the Oak's Hollow to carve new nests in distant boughs beyond the forest's edge. Agar flew far and wide at Riga's behest, always thinking of her test, and returned home with tales of all that he had seen. Dark clouds surrounded them. Fires burned within trees, split by thunderous bolts. His twin kept his words close. Riga scattered prophetic bones and traced their curvature like weathered oaken bends. In them the signs were clear. A great storm did indeed approach. They in its path. And so they prepared themselves for war. I wish, I wish you'd just give it to me. I could use it to help us face what we both know is coming. It doesn't even belong to you. This coming storm he speaks of was the Flashpoint. The battle of Saturn against the Taken King. It was the shift from stability into dissonance. I failed to shape Aldrin in accordance with my goals, but if I were to take all that he was and reveal that past to him now, would he be my brother? Or is it only his echoes that remain? I see many of those same beginnings leading now to different ends. Tell me, would you be so forgiving if Crow carried more of Aldrin with him? Would you still accept him? A defensive ward has been engaged over the scepter. It is a failsafe to keep it protected. Either my brother found this place without my knowledge and set it off, or the ward was engaged when the surrounding architecture suffered structural damage. There is a bypass. It is code, kept secret, in that it has been scattered across dozens of terminals throughout the Awoken territory. Fret not, you don't have to collect them. I will have the pieces consolidated and reformed. While you wait, you needn't stand idle like a lost child. Return to me. My borders are threatened. Once you are all done listening to that dialogue in the astral room, you want to head back to the helm and through the portal to talk to Marasov once again. She'll give you a little bit of dialogue here which you can go ahead and read. And then after this she'll give you the next quest step which has you collect parallax trajectory during activities during season of the lost. And then also kill combatants with rifle final blows in the new astral alignment activity. I personally did this with an auto rifle and about 3 completions for my first weekly engram unlock in the new astral alignment activity on the Dreaming City. 
So just keep in mind that this is a six man activity and there are probably a lot of other people doing this quest line at the same time you are and that means they're going to be kill hungry to get all the ads they possibly can to progress their quest up so you're going to have to be a little bit more proactive and greedy in terms of trying to get these kills because they are not shared. So you just want to make sure that you go ahead and actually get these auto rifle or whatever rifle final blows you're going to go with here as quick as you possibly can. Once you complete step 6 by getting all of your rifle final blows and collecting all of your parallax trajectory in activities, you'll then be given access to step 7 which will then want you to kill 18 champions and get 20 defeats with your supers and you also have to do this inside of the astral alignment activity on the dreaming city so just keep that in mind that you have to get these champion kills and super kills in this activity as well so i recommend just requeuing as soon as you get this quest step done and also throwing on champion mods to help deal with the overloads and unstoppables that you'll be fighting in this activity so once you have killed all of your champions and gotten all of your super kills, you'll then have access to step 8. And for this step, you'll have to get things called strands of nobility, which you can collect from specific bosses. And basically the best way to actually do this is to load into strikes via the directory on that planet. And as you can see here, it has us do the Lake of Shadows on the EDZ, the Disgrace on the Cosmodrome, and lastly the Glassway on Europa. So like I just said, you want to load into these strikes manually via the directory that they are found on and the reason for that is because it will save you a lot of time in the long run as opposed to having to wait for them to come around in the strike playlist. So it's pretty simple for this step. All you have to do is complete the strike and then the strand will pop out of the chest at the end after you kill the final boss. And then after you complete all three of these, you'll then be able to progress to the next quest step. So once you have collected your third and final strand of nobility after completing the third strike that you need to, you'll then have access to the ninth quest step which will then have you go back to the helm and speak to Marasov once again. So lastly, once you have loaded back into the helm, you want to go through the portal and into Marasov's chambers to talk to her one more time. This is where she'll give you the exotic noble seal which is the item that allows you to pick up the exotic trace rifle through the barrier that is currently protecting it. So you want to make sure that you go ahead and actually claim this from her and then load into a hollow coordination via the helm directory as soon as you pick this up from her. Lastly, after many annoying and tedious quest steps, you can then go ahead and load into the mission. This will put you in front of a portal that normally leads into Marasov's chambers but goes to the Atlas Gearum as shown before. Just head across the room and into the portal on the other side and it will bring you to the Caliburn Gatehouse on the Dreaming City which is where you can go ahead and claim your Agar Scepter and it will also give you the associated triumph for claiming it and bring you to your second to last quest step on the quest line. So next up after you claim the trace rifle you want to go ahead and equip it and then break the rocks over on the right hand side of the room and that'll lead you to another room where Kelgaroth risen from bones will actually be. As soon as you walk into the room he'll be up on the platform and your goal is to just defeat him. However just keep in mind there will be quite a few hive in this room defending him from knights, acolytes and also thrall. So just keep that in mind but it shouldn't be any problem because you have an exotic trace rifle that shoots stasis now and you can literally slow everything in this room and take it super slow if you want to. And then once you go ahead and kill him you'll then be brought to the last and final quest step of this quest line. Zivorath's subordinate came to my doorstep as a thief. Their death is the price of encroachment. Agar's scepter carves pathways toward one's goals. The compass you carry is based off the same principles as this weapon. In Oldrin's hands, it could have connected every edge of my kingdom. Through Zivorath, it would grant an omnipresence within the reef even I could not subdue. Deliver it safely to me. While it may never be Aldrin's, it may yet serve to guide what he has become. So lastly, after you defeat Kelgroth, the Hive Knight, over on the Dreaming City, you'll then have to go back and talk to Marasov on the helm in her chambers to wrap this quest up. So what you want to do is load back to the helm and go talk to her one last time. Now she's just going to give you a bunch of lore here so I'm going to go ahead and wrap the video up but if you do want to stick around to watch the lore feel free to do that and support the channel. 
But anyways, that is going to do it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did find this guide helpful or informational, be sure to give it a thumbs up and drop a comment below letting me know what you think. And also subscribe to the channel to see future content just like this. And that's going to do it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, peace out. Have a good one. So you wish to hear the rest of my brother's story? Fine. I will oblige you. When the storm came, Riga and Agar rode the winds to meet it. A fleet of talons at their back. A great battle ensued. The storm took, as was its nature. Many fell, Agar among them. Riga could only watch as he tumbled down, 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 until her heart beat alone. She dove into the storm, giving herself to destroy it. Riga's spirit ascended higher into the sky where she hoped to reunite with her brother. Instead, she met the thing that sent the storm. A bottomless well of grief, unreachable by reasoning or bargaining or violence. A voice in the darkness. And so, Riga gathered her feathers into an aegis of wings to shield the world below. But over the years, feathers broke away. Futility wore thin her resolve. Then, one day, her heart began to beat as it once had. Doubled, distant, but different. A beautiful echo. Hope called her home. And though she prayed to find Agar there, he never returned. I still feel Aldrin's heartbeat somewhere out there. When your crow first stood in my halls, I saw an ember of my Aldrin burning in his breast. Curiosity and a sibling fondness told me I could stoke that ember. I hope it is not a lie. I hope he is more than the last ebb of hot ash from a long dead flame. Many of his faults were not of his own making. Aldrin's decisions were his, of course, but driven by whips in the hands of others. Myself included. I will have to offer him more than an old story of an empty promise if I wish to see that ember burn again. This is the path I led Aldrin down. If certain acts had kept to their roles, I would have wielded Aldrin Sov, Light Bearer. But even Maya Sov cannot control everyone. I celebrate his resurrection in the light, but I detest seeing my brother rewritten, his greater self sloughed away and swept into the cellar. There is still good to draw from who he was. Don't squander. He needs a star to guide him. Aldrin or Crow, they are the same in that regard. Agar's scepter is yours, then. Both its burden and the freedom it can provide. Be careful with it, Guardian. He is prone to devotion.